the revival just really inspired me and and, and I, I just want to bring to you this morning a, a very familiar piece of scripture, yet it's it's profound and, and, and the Lord spoke to me many truths out of this story here in Mark 5, 25. And and, uh, and as I minister to people here in the county and even outside of the county, I'm convinced that um, we all have struggles. I'm convinced that we all have maybe even baggage or, or, or issues. I believe we all have issues. In fact, I believe that everyone who is hearing my voice this morning, whether it be here at Crossroads or through uh, our website or the internet, that we all have, have been involved in issues or all have issues in our life. Now, your issue might be different than my issue. Some of you might be suffering uh, from an issue of, of a mind or where your, your mind is being tormented, where you worry and you think about uh, things where you fret over or something, you might have a, an illness that has, has pulled you down, that has, that has held you back from being the, the woman of God or the man of God that, that He has called you to be. You might have an issue of, of temptation or you might have an issue of, of addiction or you have, might have an issue maybe even in your finances this morning. I don't know, but whatever it might be, I believe that we all have issues that we need to deal deal with. And, and whatever your issue might be, is we need to deal with it today. For we cannot put off tomorrow what can be dealt with today. Do you hear me, friend? Don't put it off until tonight at 6 o'clock. Don't put it off until tomorrow or even next Sunday. Deal with it today. And just like this woman here in Mark's Gospel chapter 5, she had an issue. But her issue was it that no man, nobody, amen, had a uh, um, uh, um, a cure for it. They didn't have an answer for it. Amen. She she dealt with it every day. So she did what any God-fearing person, whether it be a man or woman, amen, that called themselves a Christian, a born-again believer, should do, and she took it to the Master. Hallelujah. She took it to the Master. And see, that is what we are to do. I believe it's so many times that we try to deal with issues on our own. And I'll be the first one to tell you that every time I try to deal with an issue on my own, I mess up. <laughs> every time. Every time I try to deal with an issue on my own without the leading of the Holy Spirit, without the direction of God in my life, I mess up. I fumble the ball. I, I cannot do it on my own, friend. I need God to help me to deal with the issues and to solve the issues in my life. Hallelujah. See, when we allow God to come in and to, and to deal with those issues that may be even hidden, uh, you know, a lot of us have the hidden issues that, that we don't want nobody to know. And so if we will allow God to come in and deal with those issues, friend, He will restore what's been broken. He will do what man cannot do. Amen. If we will just press in. Somebody say press in. If we will just press in and but just touch Jesus this morning. Friend, listen, His presence is here. He is here. So all you got to do is press in. you got to press in past the, your mind and the things that happened yesterday and the things that might even happen. Happened uh, an hour ago. I don't know. You got to put those things out of your mind. Press oh, yeah. in and just get a hold of Jesus. Oh, yeah. As we look at this story, I believe the Lord has revealed to me five points that I'm going to share with you this morning. That the, uh, that the, in regards to how 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 maybe our families or maybe even how the world perceives us to be. Let us read. Mark's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 25. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, she had spent everything she had, and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, amen, that He came in, she pressed behind Him, amen, to touch His garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothing, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus immediately, somebody say immediately, immediately, immediately knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, 
So many times, I, uh, let me stop right there, so many times as a young minister, uh, I began to uh, understand my father-in-law would preach. And, and as Melissa and I would sit and listen to him, even my father and, and pastors, they would preach. And afterwards, I mean, they would preach with such a holy anointing. And afterwards, they would just kind of go home and collapse. And it was like, you know, a full day of work. And, and, and I begin to feel that now. And I, as I read that, I can see that, that when we minister to people, we feel that anointing and that virtue just begin to, you know, to, to, to just, just to pull out of us. And, and, and I believe that, that, that we can use that here in so many ways. But, but, uh, but Jesus, immediately knowing in himself that, that virtue had gone out of him, he turned him about in the press and he said, Who touched my clothes? Now you got to understand is that just previously he was walking along the street and the Bible says that people were, were the, the King James Version says thronging him. What that means is that they were all crowded and trying to press up against him and trying to, you know, Jesus of Nazareth, Son of God, Son of, you know, they're trying to get up there, you know, Son of David. They're trying to get close to him. Amen. Because that's what we need to do is get close to Jesus, right? Yeah. So crowds of people were trying to, uh, you know, not throng him to, to hurt him, but they were just thronging to trying to press in on him. And so, so Jesus made a, a profound statement Who touched uh, my clothes? And the disciples said unto him, Now you got to understand these disciples. These disciples, some of them were kind of cocky. You know, Peter was, right? Peter was kind of cocky, full of himself, you know. But uh, uh, we, we understood they were, they were kind of uh, uh, these outspoken guys. Some of them were. And so Jesus said, who touched me? And his disciples said, you know, uh, don't you see the multitude around you? Don't you see all the people thronging at you? Don't you see the people pressing in? What do you mean who touched you, Jesus? Everybody's touching you. Come on now. you got to get in your mind what's happening here. And that's what they said. And, and he said, who touched me? And But the woman, the woman fearing and trembling. Now why was she fearing? And we'll get into that. Why she was fearing. But she was fearing and she was trembling. Um, excuse me. Uh, knowing what was done in her, she came and she fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said to her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and be whole of thy plague. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we bless your name. God, we thank you, Lord, for this morning. God, we consider it a privilege and honor, Lord, to be here in your presence. Father God, there is healing in the presence yes. of the Lord. There's power in the presence of the Lord. There's victory in the presence of the Lord. And God, we just pray, Lord, you will have your way in this place. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Everyone says amen and amen, amen. One more time, can we give the Lord a shout of praise? Hallelujah. Now, as we look at the story here in Mark, I believe the Lord has showed me five points I want to bring to you this morning about how people perceive us to be. And the first one is I want to ask you, how are you defined? How are you defined? Through the world, eyes of the world and your family, how are you defined? Have you ever noticed in the story, now most of us here that have, are born again, that we read our word, we have either read the story or we have heard it many, many, many times. We preach about it. We talk about it. There's poems about it. There's songs about it. We understand this story here in the Word of God. But how many have ever noticed in this story that the woman's name is mentioned nowhere? Nowhere. I mean, come on. What was her name? Was it Melissa? Was it Jessica? Come on. What was it? What was her name? Was it Selameda? What was her name? It was never mentioned of her name. All they know is what they defined her as. She was the woman with an issue. Amen. Think about it. That's, the all, that's all the information that that crowd needed. That's all the information that the writer needed to describe who she was. In other words, she was defined by her issue. Everybody knew her as the woman with the issue. She wasn't known by her name. She wasn't known by grandma or mama. She was defined by her issue. And just like the uh, blind Bartimaeus, he was defined by his, his issue. She was too. How 
many of us, and the Lord began to speak this to my spirit, how many of us are defined by our issues? Oh, you know that one woman over there that has such a terrible attitude. Oh, you know the man. You know the man that has a control issue. He tries to control everybody and he can't even control his own self. You know the one. Come on. You know the person that, that oh, the one woman is going through the divorce. The one man that, that just can't, can't deal with her life. So he's always depressed. You know the one. We become defined by our issues. We allow our issues to define us. We walk around wearing our issue like a name tag. I thought about that as I come to Kids Crusade and I saw all the name tags and I began to look and the Lord just kind of took me to a different realm and I saw name tags upon a lot of us classified us as depressed, oppressed, sick, desolate, blind, naked. Come on, I begin to see this in the Spirit and the Lord showed me that we are defined by our issues. We're totally wrapped up into what has happened to us. I think about Naomi. Yes, Naomi had a, had a bad hand dealt to her. She lost her husband. She lost her boys. And then she went, she told him, she said, don't call me Naomi again. Give me a name tag of my issue. And my issue is Mara. Or the Lord has dealt bitterly with me. She was classified by her issue. Don't be classified by your issue, friend, uh, because, listen, these issues, they'll come into our lives and they'll define our attitudes, they'll define our actions, they'll define the way we walk and the way we think, the way we behave, they'll define even how we believe. We allow it to define who we are instead of allowing Jesus Christ to define who we are, that we are children of the Most High God, and we shall not be defeated through Jesus Christ. And the Bible says that I'm free from condemnation. Don't you condemn me. Hallelujah. The Bible says I'm an heir of God. I'm an heir of, of the joint heir with Jesus Christ. Romans 8, 17. Ephesians 2, 10 says, I am the workmanship of God created for good works. I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb. Revelation 12, 11. We are more than, somebody say more than that. We are more than conquered through the blood of Jesus Christ. Don't let your issue define you. Will you give the Lord praise? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's be defined by who we are in and through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Yes, you go through it. Yes, I go through it. But let's not let, let's not, uh, let our circumstances determine our future or our present. Let's allow Jesus to do that, all right? Come on, let's allow him to do that. Yes, her issue was there. And, and it did more than just define her. I believe, number two, it disqualified her. Now listen to me. Because of her issue, she couldn't even worship. Because of the issue she had, she was not allowed to go into the temple and worship. She couldn't go ahead and have a, a relationship like we can with Jesus. She couldn't go in and, and assemble herself together with fellow sisters, fellow brothers in the Lord. She could not do it, friend. The Levitical law in Leviticus 15, 25 declared that everything and everybody she touched would be unclean. She could not have relations with her husband. She could not have relations with her, her children. She had no relationships with anybody, the Bible says, for 12 long years. 12 long years, friend. She was cut off from God and man. She was cut off from life itself. She was disqualified by her issue. Does that sound like anybody today? Does that sound like in the world or even the Christian body today? Because of our issues, we feel disqualified from everything and everyone. I began to look at our kids' crusade, and I thank God for all the people that came out and the and the and the and the, and the, uh, uh, the back to school bash. And I thank God for the people that come out. But there were so many that, that could have come out and helped. But I, I began to the Lord began to show me that people say, "Oh, like Pastor, I can't come and be part of that because of my issues." <laughs> Come on now, think about it. Oh, I'm, I'm telling somebody, listen, the man was just left and he's got me fired. <laughs> I can't be part of that outreach, Brother Mike, because of my issue. You have to overlook me. I can't go out there and pass out tracks or pass out water. 
because of my issue. I can't be part of worship because of my issue. I can't help those youth because of my issue. I can't be part of that, 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 that extended team to our nursing homes because of my issue, friend. We need to get over our issue, friend. Listen, I can't do it. And I tell my people, my boys all the time, can't, never could do anything. They say, Dad, I can't. I, yes, you can through Amen. Jesus Christ. You can. You can do all things through Jesus who gives us strength. Can't, never could do anything. Don't get so caught up in your issue that you're unable to fill your destiny. God wants you to achieve your destiny, but you've got to be willing to say to press in. Somebody say, I'm going to press in. Amen. Come on. Come on. You didn't say it like you meant it. I want you to say, press in. Press in. There you go. With authority. In other words, her destiny was not to be sick with an infirmity. Your destiny, friend, is not to be sick with an infirmity. Your destiny, friend, is to do what thus saith God. He doesn't want you to have a body that is, that is, that is ailing. He doesn't want you to have a body that cannot do what He wants you to do, friend. God wants you to go forward and to reach your destiny. Amen. Sometimes I believe we got to be like this woman. I believe we just got to be a little rude about it and press in and say, get out of my way. I want to touch Jesus. We gotta press in. Somebody say press in. Somebody say press in. Come on. Somebody say press in. Let's give the Lord praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So to press in, she had to press in. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I believe that not only the, her issue disqualified her from worshiping, I believe that her issue drove her. You ever had something in your life that just gives you drive? That just drives you? Come on, you know what I'm talking about. Those things that just drive you every day. I, I believe that this issue turned into something that just drove her. She was driven by this issue. The Word says that she tried many things. She spent uh, all of her money, everything. Now, I'm like the evangelist. I want to share this with you. Even though he's from Tennessee and I can't hold that against him because he's a volunteer. Alright? But, uh, but I, I'm like the evangelist. When the Bible says everything, Thing, I believe it means everything. Come on now. Hallelujah. The Bible said that she spent all that she had. She tried many things. She tried everything. She tried spent it all. Amen. And I believe she couldn't forget about the issue. Imagine every morning waking up 12 long years, 4,380 days of her life, she woke up knowing that she had an issue. An issue. She woke up knowing that it was going to be there. Amen. And her issue consumed her every day, all day long. It was all she could think about. It's all she couldn't get it off her mind. While others were relaxing and laughing and playing, she had an issue. While other women were, were kissing their babies and hugging their grandchildren, she had an issue. While other people were in this house shouting and dancing and praising the Lord, she was outside with her issue. Oh, while other people were fulfilling her destiny, she suffered with her issue. And as I was standing right here, I was standing right here during the revival, and I and I, I didn't care about what anybody was doing. I didn't care. All I know that God was was just ministering to me, and I lifted my hands, and He spoke this word to me right there, and then He said that many people behind you have issues, and they can't get those issues out of their mind, and that because they can't get the issues out of their mind, they won't be able to come up here and receive the wholeness that I have for them. Yes. I began to cry. I said, God, if we become such a hard people. And we can't step out from behind our seats and lift our head to the God that created us all. The God of the universe. The God of all things. The God that made me the man that I am. The God that helped me when I was, when I was down and lost and desolate and laying in the miry clay. He picked me up and we become such a hard-hearted people that we can't lift our heads and worship. That we, what happened to the tears when we used to cry for our children and our children's children. What happened to the tears? Lord, bring back the tears. Hallelujah. What happened to the fact that we used to pray and when we prayed it really meant something. We didn't have it. Now I lay me down to sleep. I pray the Lord my soul to keep. Well, we cried out and we moaned and we groaned and we said, Lord, send revival. Touch my family. Touch this body. The Lord began to 
share with me because of your issues. Amen. You are not fulfilling your destiny. Friend, you can't quit thinking about it. It's on your mind. You can't shake it. All that you can think of is how can I get rid of this issue? How can I, I get free of this issue? You're driven by it. The Lord wants to bring release to you, but you've got to do something about it. Well, you see, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over and expecting different results. Friend, you've got to do something you've never done before. Amen. You that to receive your blessing. First of all, you've got to touch Jesus. Amen. Oh, somebody get excited. I know it's early. I know it's only nine o'clock. But Jesus is in the house this morning. Hallelujah. The word declares that she pressed in. Somebody say press in. Oh, come on. Say press in. Press in. Hallelujah. The word declares that she pressed in. Amen. The word declares that it cost her everything. Friend, when the cost is much, when the cost is everything. See, sometimes I deal with people and they've lost it all. And when they've lost it all, you can really minister to them then. It, it's, it's easy to worship God on the mountaintop. Oh, come on. It's easy to be the mountaintop dwellers. Everything looks better from up high. Oh, but it's in the valley. That valley of Bath. That valley as you walk through to get to the place of worship. That valley where things seem to be going wrong. For my God is the God of the valley. He's the God of the mountaintop. He's the God of all things from first to last and everything in between. And he'll help you to get over your issue. He'll make your issue to be made whole. And when we get so consumed with our issues, we feel like we've lost it all. That's when devastation sets in. Are you devastated? Oh, you're devastated. See, the Word says that she spent everything she had. She spent it all. She spent it all, and she only grew worse. She was devastated. She tried everything. The history books tell us that there were 11 cures. 11 cures for this bleeding issue. Ladies, you know what we're talking about. Uh, this bleeding issue. Every day, every day it was there. Every, every day, there was never a day that it wasn't there for 12 years. There was 11 cures known at that time. There was tonics. There was even superstitions. There was soothsayers that brought in. There was crazy things. Of, I read one that said that, uh, that you carry the ashes of an ostrich egg in a linen bag in summer and a cotton bag in winter, you shall be dried up. <laughs> Come on! What do you mean? But I believe with all my heart. Listen, desperation causes us to do crazy things. When we get desperate, friend, if we don't turn to Jesus, why do you think there's so many um, palm readers out there? Why do you think there's so many people out there that say they've got an answer and a cure for this or that and the other? Because desperate people will try anything. Anything. I, I, begin, I, I, believe, I remember it's two or three years ago we were dealing with someone that had cancer and before she got saved she was telling me that, that, that she had this cancer and she went to this person and that person. She got on the internet. She tried this herb and that herb. She tried uh, driving all the way to California because it's one remedy. She even went as far as, as, as overseas to try this and that and the other. Desperate people will do desperate measures to get the healing and she was devastated. It cost her energy, her resources and even her dignity. I told you about the Levitical law. She had to shout everywhere she went, unclean, unclean. Did she have leprosy? No, but she had a form of uncleanliness. And the Levitical law told us that she had to shout, unclean, unclean, unclean. She came to town even though nobody wanted her around. Why else do you think she had to sneak up behind Jesus? Think about it. You read it a hundred times. Why do you think she had to sneak up behind Jesus? Amen. Because she was a woman at first. You couldn't approach somebody of his authority. Number two, she was unclean and she couldn't get me around nobody. She had to sneak in. And that's why she said, if I can just reach under, there's no doubt because of the multitude, because of her situation, she probably got stomped on. Yeah. I'm here to tell you what that's yeah. when we get determined, when we get determined, 
Hallelujah. She was embarrassed. Have you ever been embarrassed? I have. I've got up on the pulpit and embarrassed myself so many times. I've just kind of grown immune to it. Melissa <laughs> says, why'd you say that? I said, I don't know. <laughs> now we're taping it. I can't hide it. I get phone calls, pastor, from my family. Boy, what do you say to somebody? Leave us out of your conversations. <laughs> Oh, oh, she was embarrassed. She was embarrassed by it. She was ashamed by it. And people with issues, friend, we are a people that have issues. We are broken. We are crushed. We are exhausted. You, you feel like you just can't bear the thought of going to another altar call. Uh, you feel like you just can't come up here and reveal that same issue that you're always struggling. You feel embarrassed by it. I don't want to tell the pastor. I don't want to tell, tell the prayer team that I'm still struggling with depression. I don't want to tell them that I'm still struggling with this, this thing that's got a hold of me. But friend, let me tell you the only way you're going to get over it is you got to come and you got to confess it unto the Lord. Amen. You got to give it to Him. You got to say, God, it's an issue, but I'm giving it to you. Amen. It's going to be your issue, Lord. You take care of it. You deliver me from it. You set me free. Hallelujah. 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 And with all of that said, it's lost, brought me to my last point. Because of issues in our life, because of America has turned into what she is, because that we have become a society of, of no morals. No, we, we don't we don't we don't we don't hear holiness preaching like we get around here, Pastor. I, I visit churches and we don't hear that no more. We don't hear it no more. We don't hear the fact of the preaching of tithe. Come on, it's unheard of. We don't hear that no more. And because we go through all the ins and the outs, the, the issues that we face, friend, I'm here to tell you we are desperate. I'm desperate. I don't know how you feel, but I'm desperate. I'm desperate for the Lord. I'm desperate for a mighty move. I'm desperate. I don't want my family to struggle. I don't want my children to, to be left behind. I don't want my family to be left behind. But the trumpet of the Lord shall sound. I want my family to, to go home to Jesus with me. I want you to be in heaven with me. I want you shouting with me and praising with me and keeping up going with us. <laughs> She had an issue that drove her. It drove her. And you know where it drove her? It didn't drive her to the grave. It didn't drive her down to Dr. Osama or whoever else. It didn't drive her to somebody else. It drove her straight to Jesus. 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 Oh, you've got to let your issue drive you to Jesus, friend. She pushed. Somebody say, I'm going to push. Oh, she pushed past the shame. She pushed past. She pushed past man's protocol. She was. <laughs> she was desperate for a change. You gotta be desperate for a change. She was desperate for a change, friend. That desperation it drove her to divine intervention.
baby, that she'd never hold that darling, that she'd never have relations with her husband. She was free. I want you to say, Lord, touch me right now. Touch my infirmity. 